we're a bit we're a bit upset of this sort of globalization of some of the distilleries um, and we're a little bit heartbroken that some of these distilleries sold themselves out really you know last year in the February of last year I could have bought a bottle of Macallan's 10 year standard for about £35 a bottle by the June the same year it was £230 a bottle so if Macallan's don't do well in the foreign market they've lost their customer base in Scotland because we felt that was quite well quite rude Welcome to the A Midlife Traveler podcast, where we want you to go see the world, discover interesting stories about people, places, and practical advice to help you plan your next vacation. Hey, let's go see the world. Hello, and thanks for listening to the A Midlife Traveler podcast. We are in the middle of a series on Scotland for season one, which is sharing Scotland through the voice and the opinions of a Scotsman named James. I'm your host, Laura, and this episode is a continued segment on the topic of Scottish whiskey. Now, Scottish whiskey, and particularly single malt, is very famous and popular worldwide, And in previous episodes, you heard how whiskey is like a little time machine and also about bottling dates. Now, this episode takes a different spin and talks about how Scottish whiskey distilleries are being acquired by large global beverage companies and some of the effects of that globalization. And the globalization of Scottish whiskey is impacting the market overall, both with a spiking demand for the product and in some cases resulting in massive price increases that, you know, may not be so popular back home in Scotland. So like others, this is a field recording. It was taken during a drive. Uh, This one was recorded on a drive through the Scottish Highlands as we were leaving a distillery. So there is a bit of background noise, but it's really an interesting perspective and here's James to share with you his thoughts on some of the effects of globalization of Scottish whiskey. I hope you enjoy. A large company, global drinks company called Diageo bought a lot of distilleries in Scotland and what they tried to do because they wanted to the distilleries to produce more whiskey but we can only produce how much barley we have and we can only produce what the traditional methods will allow so Diageo tried to take a genetically modified form of the Scottish barley plant it in America and ship it to the UK but immediately the Scottish executive said by all means do that but your company is no longer a single malt Scottish whisky company in order to be classed as a Scottish single malt whisky company all the ingredients must be grown in Scotland and you know that was to protect the, the standard more than anything else um, and Diageo really haven't understood the product that they've purchased last year in the February of last year I could have bought a bottle of Macallan's 10 year standard for about £35 a bottle by the June the same year it was £230 a bottle because Diageo had flooded the foreign market with this whiskey. And then they went back to McAllen's and said, that was brilliant, you know, the world really loved that, sold very well. When when can we have more? And McAllen said, well, uh, 10 years. <laughs> no, no, that's that's not, qu- that's not uh, uh, quick enough. But it, it's a 10 year single malt, uh-huh. So it takes 10 years. And Diageo just don't understand the process. So unfortunately for McAllen's, they have lost a 140-year-old Scottish market because the men that have religiously drank McAllen's for a very long time were saying, well, that's disgusting what you've done. I have been a loyal client for 40, 50 years and I now have to pay £230 a bottle because you've sold it on the foreign market. So if McAllen's don't do well in the foreign market, 
they've lost their customer base in Scotland because we felt that was quite well quite rude um, and many of the hoteliers in Scotland and whiskey bars in Edinburgh were having to buy this whiskey back from countries like Spain, Germany and France at inflated prices because they have it on their menus so it was uh, we're a bit we're a bit upset of this sort of globalisation of some of the distilleries within the Diageo company um, and we're a little bit heartbroken that some of these distilleries sold themselves out really you know so because of this big new market that's opened up in Asia it's a huge market especially in Japan so the the winners of the best single malt whiskey in the world 2015 to 2016 was Japan the Sapporo company they won the best single malt whiskey uh, 2015 into 2016 And that makes sense. Well, any time very expensive private bottles of whiskey have went to auction, it's always been Japan that's bought them. So I think they've been perfecting their techniques in making single malt whiskey. However, I'll be fair with this because the rules of the, the, the best single malt whiskey in the world competition is a bit silly. You can only ever win it once. Which means, unfortunately... That at some point in time, the worst whiskey in the world <laughs> is going to win the best whiskey of the world award. I, I, I'm a bit, I'm a bit spun out by these rules because it doesn't seem to promote competition. If if a company is producing the best single malt ten years in a row, it should win that award ten years in a row. 